Hey everyone, Derek here with a quick news update on Paper Mario the Origami King, as Game Informer recently had an interview with Kensuke Tanabe, producer at Nintendo, and someone who worked on Super Mario RPG back in the Super Nintendo days, and has been involved in every game in the Paper Mario series since Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, so he really knows his stuff. And it's a rather interesting interview that goes over the decisions made for the Origami King and why things are the way they are. So he initially says, when continuing a game series, it's much easier to carry over the basics from an existing game system rather than building new systems for each new installment. But that's not how you create new experiences or unexpected surprises. As a game designer, I want to deliver new experiences and surprises to our fans, so I always challenge myself to create something new. To be sure, I will sometimes use the same system in a subsequent game to further develop that system until I feel it has reached its full potential, but my goal is to continue to tackle new challenges as much as possible. And of course this ties into the new battle system for Origami King, and the idea initially came from Naohiko Aoyama, who is a member of the staff and intelligence systems and director of the previous entry in the series, Paper Mario Color Splash. He asked for a battle system in which the enemies surround Mario to attack from all sides. That became our starting point when thinking about how the battles would work. Eventually they came up with a concentric circles and moving around the enemies, but something was still missing in the grand scheme. So they kept thinking about what to do until one day, Tanabe had an idea suddenly pop up into his head while he was in the shower, as a lot of ideas tend to do. The idea was based on a Rubik's Cube, and it inspired him to add vertical rotations to the horizontal ones, so they got this slide mechanic added to the program and it worked well. That was the moment he was convinced they'd be able to build their battle system. However, this also led to another issue as the battle system was made from multiple enemies and bosses tend to be one at a time. So they kept thinking about what to do when eventually they had an idea. He says, it occurred to us that one way to avoid introducing a different system would be for the boss battles to be the opposite of regular battles, with the boss in the center and Mario creating a route to the boss from the outside. I drew concentric circles on a whiteboard, put mock-ups of some panels using magnets with arrows and other things drawn on them so Miss Risa Tabata, the assistant producer, and I could simulate how a battle would play out multiple times. We felt that we had gotten something pretty good out of that process, so I proposed it to Intelligent Systems, and it was accepted. But even beyond the battles, one of the biggest departures with Origami King is that the story isn't chapter-focused as past games have been. Instead, players can travel from region to region seamlessly in an open-world setup. And along his travels, Mario will encounter a host of toads who have been folded into different origami forms. Hitting them with his hammer reverts them back to their normal form, then several things can happen. They might return to Toad Town, where they'll restore valuable services to the location, like selling items or opening the dock, or they could join Mario in battle, watching from the sidelines and helping when asked and paid with coins. You can also go fishing if you're looking for some downtime. And finally, Tanabe talked about partners. He says, We never considered whether or not we should implement a party-based system like some other games. As we worked on Paper Mario the Origami King, we decided we could create more memorable moments if Olivia and the other characters team up with Mario along the way. In other words, we first determine what elements are needed in a game and then figure out how to implement and program them. Bobby, the bob was the first character we decided to include, and from there we chose the characters that would be the best fit for the events in each stage of the game. Bowser Jr. was an exception. The director, Mr. Masahiko Nagaya, personally had strong feelings about including a storyline where a son sets out to save his father. So in this case, we decided to include the character before deciding exactly what we should have him do. And yeah, that's all the new information we got from Mr. Tanabe on Paper Mario the Origami King, and it's rather interesting. It gives us an insight into why they made the decisions they did, how it's all going to play, and honestly, I'm still really excited for the game. I think there's a lot of potential here. I'm really hoping the writing is as strong as ever. I hope the battles are as fun as they can be, and yeah, we'll have to see how it all turns out. But be sure to check out the full article for even more details, and of course, be sure to subscribe to Game Explained for much more on Paper Mario and other things gaming as well. Until next time. Bye.